Have you ever wondered what all these terms mean? This grounded and grounding, neutral, bonding, all of that? Sometimes a neutral is a grounded conductor, but not always. Let's get into it. All right, so to start out, there's a few terms that I think are really important to understand. Once we get into code, we start talking about a grounded conductor. A lot of times there's confusion once somebody starts trying to size a neutral conductor to figure out what size it is because they call it a grounded conductor and they don't really realize you're not just sizing it using a table. There's a lot more to neutral reduction sizes and they're completely different parts of code. So I'm not gonna get into a whole like neutral sizing video, uh, but somebody asked me a question recently and they were talking about 250.102C1, which is a table um, specifically talking about like using these grounded conductors, but they're looking in article 250.102C1 under bonding conductors and it's specific to bonding. So it's not actually talking about grounded conductors, which is 250.24, um, but there's this whole 220.61 neutral reduction size. So like there's a lot of confusion because sometimes code will call it a neutral and then sometimes they'll call it a grounded conductor, but they're actually talking about two different things. So a grounded conductor within itself is a type of conductor. It is a conductor that is intentionally brought to earth. A neutral is that, but not every grounded conductor is a neutral conductor. So just had to preface all of that. So let's get into it. First thing that we need to understand is what a grounding electrode is. When we're talking about a GEC, if you're like in forums or talking and you keep seeing people throw the word GEC out there, they're talking about a grounding electrode conductor. Specifically, that is the portion uh, of the grounding electrode system that we run a conductor to. So like right here, we run a conductor from a ground bus down to a ground rod. The ground rod is a grounding electrode. So that conductor in between is called a grounding electrode conductor. Over at a utility pole, same thing. They'll drive ground rods down at the bottom of them. And then they'll have a conductor that goes down. They're intentionally grounding this system. So that's a grounding electrode conductor. It's just the conductor that goes to the electrode. Electrodes can be a lot of different things. So if you start looking at Article 250 in code, they're gonna talk about uh, metal underground piping systems or large metal uh, underground structures, or they might talk about ground rods. There might be ground plates that you can bury. Um, there's all kinds of different things that you can use as a grounding electrode. Sometimes we use the rebar in slab. Um, so like grounding electrodes, there's a whole bunch of them, but the conductor that you run to said huge piece of metal to like establish continuity with earth, that's the grounding electrode conductor. And its purpose is entirely different than equipment grounding conductors or EGCs, which we will get here in, into in a minute. Um, grounding electrodes were not always installed. So a lot of times like old school wiring systems, it was just a hot and neutral and that was it. There was no ground as reference to earth and the systems worked just fine. It has nothing to do with the functioning of a system or clearing faults, you know, any of that stuff. It's a completely different thing. Um, equipment grounding conductors and bonding conduct uh, conductors are what are used to actually trip breakers. So just keep those things in uh, separation in your mind. Now we have bonding jumpers. Bonding jumpers are a whole different thing. Bonding is not grounding. Bonding is not grounded. Bonding just means taking one thing that's metal and another thing that's metal and jumping them together, connecting them together so that they are one continuous bigger piece of metal now. That's a bonding jumper. And there's a couple of different bonding jumpers in code that it talks about. Uh, we talk about a main bonding jumper and that is the bonding jumper that takes our ground bus and attaches it to our neutral bus. A lot of like Schneider panels, they just have a green screw and you tap the back of that screw. It goes from the neutral bus through the can, the actual metal can, which is down below making contact with the ground bus. So it's by putting that screw in, that is a main bonding jumper. It's a it's a screw type of main bonding jumper. You could, instead of using that, just run an actual conductor from the neutral bus all the way over to the ground. You could do like this, like that's a conductor, but sometimes there's just gonna be a, a screw that like, well, so the screw would be on the side. Sometimes there's just a screw that taps that neutral in so that it's making continuity with the can all the way over to the, the uh, ground bus. And that's how it's making that, that bond. It's making those pieces of metal, one piece of metal. So the main bonding jumper is always the bonding jumper that connects all of our grounds to our neutral in our panel, specifically at the panel. Next, we've got a supply side bonding jumper. So sometimes 
uh, when, when we're talking about like any grounds that are leaving the panel and going out into the field into like equipment, that's one like location within a circuit that we're thinking about bonding things. Anything before the breaker, the main first main disconnect at the service that goes back into say like a utility meter goes up to the pole. All of this stuff from like this point backwards is all considered the supply side. There's no ground established yet. We're not bringing in a green ground this way and tapping grounds and stuff like that. We never do that. We just bring our unground conductors, which are our black and our red, and we bring our neutral or our grounded conductor in with it. And then once we get in here, then we start establishing our grounds because now we're gonna have a grounding electrode that goes out to the earth. Again, has nothing to do with anything. I'm just mentioning it because it's helpful to think that all of these grounds come together. From that point, from the ground, where we've got our main bonding jumper, we can run a separate jumper because this can over here is metal and it's not actually bonded to anything and it needs to be everything that is metal that's touching anything around wires needs to be bonded together. And it has to have a way for you to be able to clear fault current. So we have to bond this can with a jumper right here to the ground so that way there's a way for it to get through neutral and go back and actually complete a circuit and clear a fault, open a breaker. So this little section right here, this little jumper, this is called the supply side bonding jumper. It's coming from the supply side and it's bonding everything that's on the supply side, but it's not going anywhere else out in the field. So we're saying that it's a bond that's happening before a breaker. It's just on the supply side. Going to supply side equipment is a better way that you can think about that. So that is a supply side bonding jumper. Next is the system bonding jumper. So you could have a separately derived system, which might be a transformer that's out in the field somewhere where you're establishing an entirely new circuit. Um, there's a primary side of a circuit and then there's the secondary side of the circuit. The secondary starts a brand new circuit. So they consider that separately derived. It's not the primary circuit coming from the utility company to the secondary power system. It's the primary that's coming into the transformer that is being separated and deriving a new source of power through that secondary. So we consider that a separately derived system. So the system bonding jumper can go in a separately derived system. That's how I always remember it. All that is, is like say in our transformer, we've got like a Y uh, secondary in our transformer, meaning that all of one side of each one of the windings are touching each other at the XO terminal. Well, we take our XO terminal and we run a jumper, a bonding jumper, a system bonding jumper from there to the actual casing of the transformer because it's a big old metal transformer. Plus we might have any of our equipment grounds that are like going in, coming out, all of that are gonna bond together at XO. So that bonding that we do to establish neutral to ground bonding in a separately derived system is called a system bonding jumper. All right, so that's all the bonding. That was the grounding electrodes. Let's talk about this whole idea of intentionally grounding something, which is where they get the whole neutral is a grounded conductor. I know I just said grounding. It is intentionally grounding, but like essentially it's intentionally grounded. That's gonna make more sense because they're calling the neutral a grounded conductor, not a grounding conductor. Grounding is specifically for equipment. So we can think of a neutral as intentionally grounded, intentionally brought to earth. It doesn't have to be. The circuit's still gonna work just fine if it's not, but it is intentionally grounded. Therefore, we are calling it a grounded conductor in addition to it being a neutral. So we call neutral a grounded conductor, but not every grounded conductor in code is a neutral. And that's where this whole sizing neutrals thing gets really weird. Because in part two of article 250 in the National Electrical Code, we have this grounded systems terminology. And it just means how we're grounding, how we're earthing the system. Not talking about how are we neutraling the system? How are we sizing a neutral? It has nothing to do with that. It's just talking about any kind of conductor that is a grounded conductor that's intentionally grounded. This is how we deal with it. Then in article 250.102C1, we have this term, it's grounded conductors and bonding jumpers, uh, supply side bonding jumpers, all of that, because we use table 250.102C1 to figure out what the sizes of those are. But it's like, wait, 
Didn't we just in part two say grounded conductors are over here? Well, yes, but no, that's system grounding. <laughs> it's grounded systems. It's a different thing than having just a bonding jumper. So this whole 250.102 thing is in part four of article 250, and that all deals with bonding. But they have to use that same table because bonding and a grounded conductor are a lot of times the same thing. So since there's a table 250.102C1, and then there's article 250.102C1, even though it's only really talking about bonding, they have to put the word grounded with it because the grounded conductors in part 250.24 actually deal with the same table. So that's the only reason grounded is in there. If you look around through 250.102C1, there's no other mention to neutral or grounded conductors. It's just in the title. Everything in there is all bonding jumpers, bonding conductors. Anyways, moving on, they are intentionally grounding a system. Uh, that means of doing that is a grounded conductor. So the neutral is now grounded because there's something touching ground with it. And then lastly, we have equipment grounding conductors. So equipment grounding conductors or EGCs, you're gonna see all the time in code. Um, anytime you run a circuit out to a motor or like a piece of equipment or something receptacle, you're running a ground with it. That ground is actually called an equipment ground or an equipment grounding conductor. So it's actually to ground that piece of equipment. Now it's not saying that it's bringing it to earth for some reason, it's actually there so that it can trip and clear a fault. It's actually connected to neutral, it's bonded to neutral, and that's the reason that we run equipment grounding conductors. It just so happens that they go out to the panel outside where we have the ground rod, where we are intentionally grounding the entire system. So technically the equipment grounding conductor is a conductor that is intentionally grounded. You know, it is brought to earth, but it's not the function of it, it's not the reason for it. Um, it, it does help to like displace energy down into earth during a fault, yes, but the intention of the equipment grounding conductor is to clear a fault. That's the biggest importance reason why we do all of that. Um, I guess it, it's a little arguably that it, the, the reason that we do it is the earth too, but my point is if we took the grounding electrode out of the situation and threw it away, and just ran an equipment ground and bonded it at the service panel, everything would still work just fine. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying that's the purpose of it. Um, so equipment grounding conductor, we've got a panel, right? We've got our transformer up here. We're feeding down a black and a red. We have a breaker, like two pole 30, whatever. We run that out and say there's like a break in the circuit and then it just keeps going. At this break, we have, say we had like two different conduits or something like that, or we had like, uh, two junction boxes where we ran from the motor side to the first junction box and then from this junction box goes to the panel. So there's an air gap in between that. Well, we need to jump that equipment grounding conductor together. So when you're jumping two different pieces of an equipment grounding system together, the jumper in between there is called an equipment bonding conductor because you're just continuing the equipment grounding system, but you're bonding two pieces of it together to make them one. So it's still a bonding jumper. You may think all these things are completely unnecessary and I'm a little on the side of agreeing with you. Everything just used to be called a bonding jumper. And then they were like, well, there's lots of bonding jumpers. So like, let's, let's at least see like, this is the main bonding jumper that we're talking about. Every other bonding jumper is just a bonding jumper. And then as the years have gone on, they're like, well, there's the equipment bonding jumper. There's the supply side, you know? So they just wanna be able to talk about where we're at in a system to know which conductor we're talking about. But all bonding jumpers are sized the same way. So like, it, it, it doesn't really matter, it, but it kind of does matter. The more technical you wanna be with things, um, the more speaking about it correctly actually matters. So uh, equipment grounding conductor, that is coming from a panel to a piece of equipment. It, yes, is intentionally grounded, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> It'll still work. It's bonded to neutral. So it's almost like calling it a, it, an equipment grounding conductor just confuses it, but I understand why they do that because it is intentionally grounded. Um, and then if there's two different parts to the system, J box here, J box here, you gotta get them connected. You run an equipment bonding conductor to them. So that is all the terms. 
That's way longer than I want it to be, and it was way more convoluted and code article-y. Please leave some comments below if you have any comments, questions, concerns, whatever. I'm happy to do more videos. I will probably do, I don't know, I might not actually do like a, a, a sizing neutral conductor thing for YouTube. I might do that for a members thing and make you pay for it. Um, that's a really long convoluted process with a lot of different uh, answers to it. So anyways, leave some comments below if you guys want to hear more about anything specifically. Love you crazy people and I'll see you in the next one.